All right, guys, we got to talk about the homeowners right now because people who recently bought a home, they're taking some pretty fat losses, especially in the value department. New homeowners lose $122,000 as housing prices drop. High interest rates and the amount of people applying for a mortgage is at an all-time low. Not to mention, even if you have money for a mortgage, the banks are going to be very, very strict with you because everyone's a little bit scared of the whole 2008 situation. Did you know foreclosures are going up? I think banks are restricting people from buying homes it's to prevent something like 08 from ever happening again. And I think with banks restricting homeowners from going all out, it's probably a good thing to see. New homeowners across the US are confronting a massive depreciation of their home values because a lot of times these guys buy like new construction homes, right? Let's say you buy a new construction home like this. Chances are the developer gonna give you guys a very good interest rate, like five to 6%. But the downside is if you try to sell it, on the secondhand market because you bought it initially, buyers will have to pay the market rate for interest rates, which is over 7%. And that essentially means that you gotta sell your home for cheap. Whereas developers will sell their homes for a little bit more expensive because they offer lower rates. And just like buying cars, the moment you drive off the lot, you lose thousands of dollars. Just like nowadays when you buy a new construction home, you lose money automatically if you try to sell it on the used market. And this is what's causing a lot of people to start panicking, right? People who bought homes just a few months ago are seeing huge amounts of depreciation because home builders are just going all out. If you check out this, places like the heavy condo markets, like Miami, Manhattan, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, are all experiencing dangers or have already experienced massive price drops. Miami, for example, people say how great it is, right? You know, prices will never go down. Well, guess what? There's so much building right now and there's only so many people buying homes. Prices have dropped. Chicago, Detroit have all dropped, especially Detroit, down 8%. Look at St. Paul, down 0.3%. Not much, but it's finally going down after being a pandemic of boomtown. Check out Colorado Springs, down 3.2%, especially places like Nashville, you know, people say how good Nashville was. It's already down 2%. New Orleans is pretty bad. And obviously, San Francisco and Oakland are dropping as well, nearing 10%. Even Vegas. People talk about how big companies are moving to Vegas. But Vegas is dropping 3%. And on average, homeowners are just losing a ton of money, taking L's after L's after L's. And on average, they're losing about $233 per day. And just a span of a few months, that is a lot of money being lost. And homeowners are the ones holding the bags on a lot of these properties. Hasn't been this hard for homeowners to get a mortgage since 2013. And for all the buyers out there who want to buy homes, this was actually relieving some of the pressure for sellers. A lot of these sellers need to sell homes, but they also need a large chunk of buyers. But now the banks are restricting buyers from getting a mortgage. And at one point, this is actually a good decision because a lot of these buyers are just trying to put like five to 10% down and the mortgage is like 50% of their income and not, if not even more than that. At first banks were willing to do it, but now banks are not willing to do it, right? Banks are seeing people literally skipping meals to pay the mortgage, which is something that banks don't really wanna see. Banks kinda want you to see you having fun and paying your mortgage because if you're having that difficult time paying a mortgage, Banks are gonna be the ones at the end holding the bags. And I gotta tell you, big banks don't wanna do that. US foreclosure activity shows continued rise and third quarter approaching levels seen before pandemic. Now, if you look at this, obviously in 08, foreclosures just swung all the way up, right? Foreclosures went from just 100,000 to 200,000, suddenly to nearly a million. And it stayed on this level for the next few years. Eventually it went down, but now, look at this, foreclosures are now slowly ticking upwards. And it's getting kind of high, right? It's nearing 100,000. It used to be about 25,000. And that was also during a time when the government actually froze a lot of mortgage payments. That actually prevented many foreclosures. That's why you see this very steep drop during the pandemic. But now that stuff is over. People over leverage and now foreclosures are surging up. And people are saying for 2024, we could be seeing foreclosures hitting an all time high. And if banks and sellers and buyers are not careful and they don't balance everything out well, we could be seeing foreclosures doubling from the current rate, which is frankly super scary. The report also shows that there's a total of almost 37,000 US properties for foreclosure filings in September 
2023, up 8% from the previous month and up 15% from September 2022. This is massive news. And if you look at the Airbnb industry, it's not great. I could make a whole new video about the Airbnb industry and how vacant it is. This is some dangerous stuff. Airbnb America. Biggest U.S. cities have 5.5 million homes sitting empty thanks to a massive surge and families and investors snapping up vacation properties. Let me tell you one thing about Airbnb. At first, Airbnb was an extremely profitable sector to make, right? If you look at very popular destinations like Airbnb Hampton, people are just buying homes, people buying condos every single day. And a lot of these properties, they do look absolutely gorgeous and fantastic. I mean, look at some of these massive Hamptons homes that they're trying to rent out, like $700, $900 a pool. I mean, Airbnb is very profitable, but when you have everyone doing it and everyone expecting to make like fifty dollars to $70,000 per year as like a mini hotel tycoon, it's not gonna end well. A lot of times when you're trying to make money, the less people in the field, the better. And when everyone is doing Airbnbs, it gets super saturated. This is why in places like Phoenix, even during Super Bowl weekend, one of the biggest events in America, half of the homes are empty. How is that even a thing? It's Super Bowl weekend and the vacancy rate is 50%. I can't imagine what the vacancy rate for Phoenix is when there is no big event. It's probably close to the 80, 90%. Same exact thing to these favorite heavy vacation rentals. Look at some of the price cuts, guys. 850, this home in Southampton, down to a little over $400 a night. You got this one in Hampton Bays, a fantastic location. Look at this, 490 to 390. Prices are being cut. In fact, you're seeing more price cuts than price increases. I mean, these super luxury ones, like close to $2,000 a night, forget it. They're never gonna get rented out. And look at these homes, right? A lot of these are receiving some of the biggest price cuts. And this is not great for people who are in the Airbnb industry. And this is why you're seeing a bunch of vacant homes, more than 600,000 vacant homes in just three cities. New Orleans, Miami, Tampa. And the total short-term rental supply in the U.S. reached nearly 1.4 million in September. Limited housing inventory is contributing to a historically tight market. And with so many people trying to do hotel stuff, guess what's happening? It's looking pretty bad. Too many people are doing this hotel stuff. Too many people are having fun at Airbnbs. And now nobody's having fun. You probably have seen YouTubers buying Airbnb properties and they start realizing that it's not all fun and games. It's very tedious. There's a lot of regulations and rules and you never know when your city will ban Airbnb. Like New York City straight up banned Airbnb for several reasons. And the chances of getting a short rental license is very difficult. And this is why 80% of Airbnbs in New York City just simply left the market. Not to mention the amount of new construction is just nuts, right? There should not be this much new construction. I'm all down for new construction, but when developers are making this many homes and expecting people to buy all these communities, it's ludicrous. Look at all these new construction homes from low prices like 300,000 to upwards of 600, $700,000. Are people buying them? Absolutely not. And just new construction communities, we're looking at hundreds and just new construction homes listed on Zillow, we're going towards like 5,000 new homes. And if you look at the total amount of homes in the Austin metropolitan area, used and new, it's about 11,000. So we're looking at half of all the homes available for sale in Austin being new construction. Now that's a bubble waiting to pop. Thanks for watching guys. Comment below and subscribe for more real estate news.